Hey, everybody, we are back with the one, the only Chris Woolsey. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Raven. Oh, I'm of course. As always. Yes, I always have a blast chatting with you. And, you know, I just have to say, I think I have two more things on my list of to watch from last month. Good grief. It's It's been a roller coaster, but we're getting through them. So now I just have... I'm, I'm waiting to see what you got for me. I'm rolling up my sleeves, getting ready. <laughs> well, as usual, we've got a ton of great stuff between uh, Crackle, Redbox, and Chicken Soup for the Soul free streaming services. So your dance card is going to be filled once again. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait. Hit me. All right. <laughs> so we'll start. We're, we'll start with Crackle. Um so this month we are promoting, we've talked about it in the past, our deal with the BBC. Right. And so we are promoting all of our uh, Brit content. So we're we're calling it Get Your Brit Fix <laughs> on Crackle. Um, and I can't remember what we have and haven't talked about specifically, but Sherlock, I think yeah. we talked about. Okay, oh, yeah. so mm -hmm. obviously we have Sherlock, the uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Martin Freeman series, really, really good stuff. Um, did we talk about Taboo with yes. Tom Hardy? Okay. Yes, we did. We talked about Taboo with Tom Hardy. Ripper Street, I, I'm not sure if we... We briefly touched on it, and I absolutely love that one, too. Like, I love Taboo, too. So, like, the, BBC is filled with amazing stuff. Ripper Street is amazing. Yeah, Ripper Street is great. So, that's starring uh, Matthew McFadden from Secession, which everyone is currently obsessed with. Oh, yeah. And I need to get my uh, free trial. It's on HBO Max, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I need to get my free trial of HBO Max and binge through that uh, because people are just like screaming at me to watch it. But uh, Matthew McFadden and uh, Adam Rothenberg from Ozarks, which is another amazing series. And um, they, it's a period piece. It's a Victorian crime thriller series. So it takes place six months after the last Jack the Ripper murder. And there is this special police task force that's being created uh, to protect the people of Whitechapel, which is this very poor community on the east side of London. And uh, as soon as this group gets put together, murders start to occur again. And so the, the uh, officers in this very specific division are wondering, um, is, is this Jack the Ripper coming back or is this some sort of a copycat murder? Right. And um, yeah, it's just, it's phenomenal. I mean, you, you rightly uh, praise the uh, unbelievable level of uh, quality of Ripper Street. I mean, the, the writing, the directing, the art direction, uh, the performances, it's just top notch uh, beginning to end. So yeah, that is definitely one to check out. And they do a really good job at making it just dark and gritty, which also adds to the suspense of everything. And you're just like, on the edge of your seat wondering like what's going to happen and it's it just gives you these little you know little scares here and there and it's just it's really well done but again it's bbc so i mean totally totally know, don't expect anything less from them <laughs> i know that's no joke um another great series we have is midsummer murders which um is funny because i had never heard of it before we started uh streaming it on crackle and now that I now that I I've seen a couple episodes and and have watched it, I see it everywhere. Like people are constantly talking about this series. And one of the reasons why is it's been on forever. It's been on for ten seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been on for so long that they actually had to get another leading man because the other one retired. <laughs> um, so it's it's an amazing series. Uh, John Nets uh, plays Detective Chief Inspector Tom Barnaby. And if you can imagine kind of a British version of Murder, She Wrote, mm -hmm. uh, but with less Angela Lansbury and more uh, British detectives, um, it's it's really good. I've, I've kind of fell in love with it. I love the the like sort of folksy feel to it because it takes place in like this mythical region of England called Midsummer. And it's just these detectives and they go kind of from hamlet to hamlet right. uh, investigating um, these sort of uh, small town murders, if you will. Yeah, and, I, 
I've only seen one episode and I okay. liked it. And it's definitely okay. something that I want to get back to. You know, you forget about things or, yeah. you know, you come in here during the month and be like, here, watch all of these things. And you're like, oh God, there's so many. Well, now it's on the list, you know. Totally. Now I get to go so we have, ten, we have all 10 seasons. Uh, I think we have 165,000 episodes. Some crazy. Wow. <laughs> Uh, oh, really. that many. Uh, we do we, we do have all 10 seasons on crackle oh, so i mean look 10 uh, seasons you know it's got to be good if they're keeping it around that long so. totally totally and then we've got another great one uh called murder city that's really good and um kind of in the same vein um but it's starring uh, amanda donahue as detective inspector uh susan albick and Chris Marshall as Detective Sergeant Luke Stone. And kind of the funny thing, or the fun thing about this series is they're kind of a frickin' frack. Like, mm -hmm. they never agree on anything. And so the beginning of the episode is, is always them getting the news that there's a new investigation. They go, they check out the crime scene, and immediately they have two completely different ideas about uh who did it and how to apprehend the suspect and so the the episode shows them basically heading off in two different directions and then they'll come together kind of at the end and you find out uh who was right and who was wrong that is hilarious it's really fun um it's a yeah. new spin on a detective type of show because you know at the end of the day you you have all of these cops and robbers detective type of shows they can only go so far or do the same thing over and over, you know? So it's nice totally. you can find a, a show like this where they kind of do something that you wouldn't really expect. You're like, well, they're kind of at each other because they're like, no, you're wrong. No, I'm, you know. Yep. I think and a lot of the episodes, they don't spend any time with each other because they're, they're completely in these, uh, you know, each in their own uh, agenda as to how yeah. they can solve the crime. It's really good. That is uh, so Murder City, check that one out. All right. And then, um, you, you know, it's it's Military Appreciation Month as well as uh, Mother's Day and uh, a number of other things. So we've got uh, a ton of great military uh, films, TV series, and films on Crackle just as our, our small way of thanking uh, the members of the military community for mm -hmm. the service uh, protecting and serving our country, as well as uh, countries around the world where they are stationed. And so we have uh, not only uh, a lot of films and television series about domestic military, but also uh, military around the world. So we've got a really good series uh, called Bluestone 4-2, and this is another BBC series. And it's a it's sort of in the tradition of M.A.S.H., Mm -hmm. which uh, obviously I was a huge fan of. It's considered, you know, one of the greatest shows oh, in TV amazing. history. Yeah, it really was. And it did it did what very few shows are able to do. And it threaded the needle of, of weaving the drama with the comedy in mm -hmm. perfectly equal measures. Like it's, that's really hard to do, um, not only from a, a writing standpoint, but also uh, all the amazing performers, Alan Alda and, uh, all the unbelievable talented actors that were on oh, that yeah. series. Well, Bluestone 4 2 is, is similar to that. It, it is a sitcom technically, um, but there's also a lot of dramatic elements in the show as well. But it's got a great cast uh, Stephen White from Men in Black International, uh, Tony Gardner from Last Tango in Halifax, and Jamie Quinn from Two Doors Down, uh, which are all big British series. And it's about a British bomb disposal unit that's deployed to Afghanistan. Oh, wow. So it's timely. It's super funny. It's really well written. Um, if you like British humor, and I am like the world's biggest fan of British yes. humor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're going to love this one. Really, really funny stuff. Although I do think it's, it's a little odd thinking bombs and funny. <laughs> right? <laughs> you're like, how is this a comedy? But I you mean, it, you know, it's going to work. It's, yep. it's just going to be hilarious. And of course, I like that they will put those elements of drama in there because, again, bombs, you kind of right. have to have some exactly. dramatic effect in there. So totally, I'll definitely check totally. that one out. And then on the other spectrum, the other end of the spectrum, uh, we've got a great uh, drama series called Red Cap. 
And this is very similar. This is another BBC series. They are just so good to us. Mm. Um, and this is another one that is very similar to like NCIS, if you if you are a fan of that. So it's like it's a it's your kind of typical military crime procedural, um, but it's got a British flair to it because it's BBC. And really good. It's starring uh, Tamsin Othwaite from EastEnders, which is obviously a gigantic uh, BBC series. Uh, Douglas Hodge, who was in The Joker, and Gordon Kennedy from the series Harlots. Uh, we have two seasons, 13 episodes. If if you like pol police procedurals, any mm -hmm. of the, um, you know, uh, yeah, the detective series, this is like exactly it, just with a British military flair. Really good stuff. Cool. And then uh, more of the U.S. military, we have the classic Emmy Award winning Vietnam War series Tour of Duty. So I don't know if you watched that back in the day, but this was like late 80s. I don't really, think I really did. good. It won an Emmy Award, um, three seasons. The first season, it's interesting. So the first season was shot in Hawaii, and apparently that was a little spendy. So the second and third season, they brought it back to the U uh, to the domestic U.S. Mm -hmm. and they filmed it on the Mash set, which is just down the street from my house. It's literally like a ten minute drive from my house. So That's I hilarious. told my kids we we're gonna have to go on a hike because you can actually hike out to the old mash set. And Oh, that's cool. Yeah, unfortunately, the Woolsey fire uh, burned much of it down. And just for the record, I had nothing yeah, I, to do with like, the Woolsey fire. But yeah. I forgot that was the name of it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. Well, of course not. <laughs> Anytime people meet me, they're like, hey. They're like, nope. <laughs> right? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Oh but my it's gosh. it's a great series uh terrence knox who was in lois and clark mm -hmm. and stephen caffrey from colombo uh and kim delaney who's still kind of a huge name oh, yeah. he's an army wives great actress um yeah it's a phenomenal series so if you like uh war pieces the uh, especially the vietnam war which they're I think other than like china beach i don't think there's been yeah much in that uh mm. arena so check that one out that's one i forgot about too china beach Jeez. Yep. yeah Ooh, you're just bringing them all back aren't you right <laughs> and then finally um if you're looking for like the classic uh world war ii films mm -hmm. uh we've got a ton of those but one of them in particular is anzio uh starring robert mitchum um, so Robert Mitchum was a huge uh, celebrity back in the in the 50s and 60s. Uh, he was the lead in The Longest Day, which is another mm -hmm. huge World War II movie about D-Day. Well, Anzio uh, is kind of related to D-Day because it took place six months before, and it was the amphibious assault on Anzio Beach in Italy. And it was supposed oh, to soften up the Nazi troops stationed in Italy so that when we broke through in Normandy, they wouldn't have as much uh, to have to deal with uh, once that happened. So um, it's a very historic, but it's kind of a forgotten battle because it was really uh, as tough as as Normandy. Yeah. And yet, because Normandy gets so much attention, uh, the hero heroes of Anzio uh, are sometimes uh, forgotten a little bit. But it's Robert Mitchum, Peter Falk from Columbo. Oh, wow. Uh, which... I don't think I ever saw Peter Falk in a war film, so it's kind of fun. And Robert Ryan, who was in The Dirty Dozen, so it's got quite a pedigree if you like war films. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the movie, but like I, I really like Robert Mitchum. Like he, I mean, it's a good cast; everybody's great yeah. in this. But um, it, he's just very. He was very well versed. Like he could play a little funny, but then he could also play like really creepy. And I can't remember the name of the movie, but. He okay. basically played like a preacher. I will remember it for next time. I'll bring it up. It was, it gave you the heebie-jeebies watching him and he whistled in it. And I remember that as a kid. And if my grandmother was here right now, she would tell you what it was, but I can't remember. That movie's uh -huh. still like just in the back of my head. I just remember him with his hat and he's walking and oh, it was so creepy. It was, yeah. I'll was it a Western? Was no, it a Western? No, no, no okay. it wasn't. Um, and it's just like it's an old like town that he goes into and it it's he, not night of the hunter is it 
It might have been. I don't remember, but it, okay. I will get back to you on it. You're okay. gonna be like, oh yeah, duh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just remember as a kid just being really weirded out about it. But I was like, he's so good. He is so oh, good. My. And like he had one of those faces that you look at the yeah. actors like him and you go, they don't make those faces anymore. Like no. his face looked like it was carved out of concrete. Like it yeah. should have been, yeah, like yeah, on the on like a mountainside somewhere oh. or something. He's just he had such an unusual look. Yeah. I mean, he can yeah. play evil for sure. But yeah, you're right about the the war stuff as well. Like we always focus on the really, really big things, mm -hmm. you know, like Pearl Harbor, things like yeah. that. And you're like, but there's other ones that were still areas just as bad. Oh, yeah. If not harder. But why are we not really showing a lot about that? So if you go back to a lot of the older movies, they do touch on those things. Totally. My grandfather was a huge World War II buff. So he there's a good chance I've seen this and I just don't okay. remember it, but yeah. I'm going back to watch it anyway. I love World War II stuff. It's, yeah, me too. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I'm a junkie for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> check it out. I want a full review next time we talk. Yes. Okay. Um, and then on Redbox, we've got like a kind of just a grab bag. Redbox always has so many different uh, great titles and, and we often, if not almost always get different things on Redbox as we do on Crackle. So um, you always want to make sure and check both uh, of the services because um, if you've watched everything on one, the other one's going to have a ton of stuff that that wouldn't have been there. So Redbox this month, we've got some super cool stuff. Um, Daughter of the Wolf is super fun. If you are looking for just a popcorn Friday night action film, this is Daughter of the Wolf. So it's Gina Carano who plays uh, from The Mandalorian. She's yeah. the tough, um, you know, the uh, mercenary. Yeah. Um, she's so great in this. So she plays a mom. Her son gets kidnapped by Richard Dreyfus of all things, uh, which is super weird because I've never seen him play a villain before. Um, and, you know, they think, well, what's, what's a mom going to do? You know, she's a soccer mom. What is she going to do? Well, it ends up she's ex special forces. So yeah. uh, <laughs> to, to the point, she can actually do a lot of things. And it's like cars are flipping, houses are exploding, bad guys are getting vaporized. It is like, it's exactly what you think it's going to be. And yeah. exactly what you, if that's what you're looking for, it's, it's awesome. It delivers uh, in spades. So. Yeah, I'm always up for that. Me too. Big yep. explosions, you know, yep. like Fast and Furious or Transformers. It's like this stuff would never even be close or remotely happening, but it's still fun. Yep. Like that's, that's why it. it's fun, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what you want. You want fun. Totally. And speaking of fun, uh, this was a hidden gem. Like uh, we, we have uh, actually there's a few on Redbox this month that I'm like, why did I not hear about this? It's so good. So um, two days in New York. This is Chris Rock. And Julie Delpy, uh, who I had an unhealthy obsession with in college. Uh, <laughs> she's so cute. And the cool thing about this movie, so they play a couple who, um, they're like this like hipster New York couple. They each have a kid from a previous relationship. Uh, and they're, you know, living their best life. And then she mentions, oh, by the way, my crazy family from France is coming in for the weekend. Oh, no. And all chaos descends on poor Chris Rock um, and she has this like Parisian trash family that comes and invades their <laughs> lives and she, so she wrote directed produced and starred in this film mm -hmm. uh, Julie Delpy yeah it's like super impressive and man is it good it's hilarious Chris Rock and uh, he's always good but like this is a different character for him. Like he he often will play these sort of like stereotypical, like over the top. And this is like, it's kind of a grounded character, um, but it's great. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, awesome. So uh, the next one on uh, Redbox is another one, like everything, like our theme uh, this month for Redbox is kind of like fits in no category because uh, these are some of the craziest uh films and tv series so we have this another one that i actually i had heard of this but i had never watched it um it's called bronson and it's kind of the film that tom hardy sort of exploded on the scene with so he had done a few things before but then um bronson came out and people were like who is this guy so 
it's a story about the most violent man in British prison history. Okay. So um, uh, a guy named Michael Peterson was arrested for robbing a post office, got a seven year sentence. And because he was so violent in prison, he ended up doing 30 years in solitary confinement. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, Whoa. it's crazy. And while he was in solitary, uh, he obviously lost his mind and created an alter ego named Charles Bronson, oddly enough. And um, <laughs> yeah, and so he's this, it's a very strange film. It's like, it's like if Tim Burton directed a psychological thriller. Um, it's very weird wow. and kind of a crazy side story. Tom Hardy watched a bunch of footage of Michael Peterson before he uh, went to go meet him before they started filming. Mm. And Michael Peterson was so impressed with Tom Hardy's characterization that he shaved off his mustache and gave it to Tom Hardy as a gift. And Tom Hardy wore it through the entire movie. No. God's <laughs> honest truth. Isn't that crazy? That's nuts. That's I know. Nuts. But I, know. I mean, and when you, you know he's he's just impressed and he's like you're telling my story so yeah i gift to you i am now he's now part of the movie that's it and it's, it's this very like signature must when you see the mustache you're like oh wow yeah i could see tom hardy going i am definitely gonna wear that yeah, yeah, yeah. uh it's i'm not exactly sure mustache. how you reassemble a mustache so that you can do such a thing but apparently it was done i mean wig makers are really That's amazing. True. They really yeah. are amazing. So there's there's definitely a way that they were able to do it, painstaking hours. But I yeah. gotta say, I'm just I'm glad the mustache was the only thing, right? That was shaved and given. Like, as could a you point. could you imagine my yeah. brain? You know the whole true crime stuff. Like my brain is going places. So we'll just right. leave it at that. <laughs> Seriously. So another um, amazing. This is one that I'm like. Uh, I am so excited to watch. I have not, uh, I've watched part of it. I haven't finished it yet, but it is unbelievable. And it has one of my very favorite actors in it, Steve Coogan. So Steve Coogan was, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the dueling Michael Caine video on YouTube. If you haven't, like as soon as we hang up, you need to, to Google dueling okay. Michael Caine and watch it. It's Steve Coogan and another actor and it's taken from a movie and I can't remember what movie it is, but it's this British film and they are, competing with each other about whose Michael Caine impression is better. And it is one of the funniest, like, it's just like a two minute video. Oh yeah, I'll uh, totally check it from out. From this movie and it's hysterical. So Steve Coogan was in 24 hour party people. He's like, he's one of those guys that when you see him, you go, oh yeah, that guy. Yeah, I um, totally know the name. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to put a face to the name. It's like, I either remember the name or the face. Right. I can never so, remember. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm terrible with names. So bad. But, so this movie is called Alan Partridge and it, so he plays, and this is a character that Steve Coogan has played in various uh, forms for the last 30 years. Wow. So there's been several TV series. There's been uh, these independent films that he's created, but this was the biggest budget one. Uh, and this is just called Alan Partridge. There's been like a myriad of titles, but I think there's been like six or seven iterations of this character, yeah. right. but Alan Partridge is, so he plays Alan Partridge, who is a local um, small town DJ who thinks he's God's gift to the radio world. And so he works in this small town radio station. Mm -hmm. The station gets bought out and he makes this huge show in front of all the employees. And he's like, no one is getting fired. I'm going to make sure that everyone here keeps their jobs. This corporation is not going to eviscerate us. And the second he gets into a meeting, he's like, hey, if we fire Jeff, the rest of us can keep our jobs. And uh, and so they fire Jeff. Jeff, <laughs> no, <Bo> Jeff. <laughs> yeah, or whatever his name is. I can't yeah, remember what no, his name I like is. that. And he has a psychotic episode goes home, gets his shotgun and comes back to the radio station and holds the place hostage. Oh my God. So Alan Partridge uses this as a excuse to further his career. And he starts live streaming the fact that he's a hostage and uh, it's hysterical. You 
have got to watch it. Uh, it starts on uh, May 20th um, on Redbox. Okay. And it's starring Steve Coogan, Cole Meany, who was in uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, mm-hmm. um, who is Miles O'Brien, the Chief Miles O'Brien, yes. the yes. redhead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Tim Key from The Double, uh, which is a very strange movie. Um, <laughs> it, it's basically like The Office, the British office, if it yeah. took place in a radio station, like it's got that same kind of dry British humor. Oh, that's got, that's going to be good. It's, yeah. yeah, I'll definitely check that one out for sure. Awesome. <laughs> and then if you're looking for classic TV, we've got a bunch of classic TV on Redbox this month. Uh, I, now this was, this was my jam because this was like right when I was in high school and trying to be a cool kid and failing miserably, but uh 21 jump street oh I don't yeah remember oh no I series just, yeah no joke i don't remember what i was watching it on i think like one of those free like live tv things uh-huh. uh that you can stream on and yeah. i watched the very first episode yeah and i was like what the hell is this i didn't yeah. remember it being you like don't remember episode. see my sister didn't remember it either i brought it up the other day and she no, goes no. what was that I remember 21 Jump Street. I just don't oh, okay. remember the first episode being like that. Like gotcha. it actually starts at Jump Street. Yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember okay. 21 Jump Street because I gotcha. was like, all of these adults being kids. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's yeah. gonna fly. <laughs> and like so many huge stars though, like obviously Johnny Depp, this was like <laughs> one of his first uh, big acting roles and he almost didn't take it because- uh, he, you know, thought that it would like pigeonhole him as a pretty boy. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Holly Robinson, Pete from yeah. Hanging with Mr. Cooper, uh, Peter Deloise, who I waited on when I was a waiter. When I first moved to LA, I waited on the whole Deloise family oh, and I love that. I got to tell you, no joke, the nicest family in Hollywood. They literally had me sit down at the table and introduced me to the whole family, Aww. including... Uh, Peter was there and Dom was there, the mom, and uh, there were like two other brothers. They're like the Marx brother. There's like Zeppo, yeah. Zeppo DeLuise, and like there's a million of them, but um, they were just lovely people. And oh, so okay. that's good. Yeah. And then Dustin Nguyen from This Is Us mm-hmm. and Richard Grieco. Yeah. Uh, do you remember Richard Grieco? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Everybody he, loved him. If Looks Could Kill. Oh. And what was the other? He had a. He had a big movie and a big TV series after 21 Jump Street. Yeah. For like two seconds. But Homeboy's still working. I ran into him when I met you at Comic-Con last year. Um, I ran into him at a TV guide party. He was He's still working. Look him up yeah, on IMDb. I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, he was super nice. That's so cool. Yeah. Yep. I mean, look, you're bound to run into someone at Comic-Con. You wouldn't oh think him. If but you don't, still, you're not trying. so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so funny. So anyway, 21 Jump Street, great series. They're like cops that are so young that they can go into places where high school and college students uh, only tread and investigate youth crimes. I don't know. It's yeah, a, it's, drugs. It's, it's a product of its day for yeah. sure. But, it, but if you want uh, to get your 80s fix, it is more 80s than than I think maybe documentaries about the 80s. Yeah, were. yeah, for sure. Yep. I agree with that. <laughs> And then another classic TV show, and this this is seems like it would be up your alley, but correct me if I'm wrong, Raven. Were you a fan of Dark Shadows? Oh, 100 percent. Okay. 100 yeah. percent Yep. So we have Dark Shadows, uh 66 through 71. It was five seasons. Um, obviously following the wealthy Collins family in Collinsport, Maine. This was a horror-themed daytime soap opera, so which good. I don't know how they pitched that and got it through. <laughs> like you couldn't, I, I have a friend who's actually trying to relaunch it right now. A, a girl I went to uh, uh, junior high with is you working. Make that happen. It. If we need to sign something for it, I will totally sign. Cause yeah. that show so hokey, but so amazing. But soap operas are hokey. Of course. You know? yeah, like that's absolutely. what you expect from those. You don't expect this like, ah, it's like the novellas. They're so over the top. You're like, well, how the hell is that going to happen? Yep. And, and apparently they- I was like, I was doing a bunch of research on it. Apparently it did like, okay for its first, like, I don't know, there were like 10 or 12 episodes and it was doing, yeah. it was doing okay. 
And then they introduced the vampire mm -hmm. and it just skyrocketed through the roof. Um, and apparently it's kind of a funny story. The ratings did really, really well, but then they ended up finding out that it was all teenagers who are running home from school as fast as yeah. possible to watch it before their parents got home. And uh, so that was kind of funny, but it had vampires, werewolves, witches, warlocks, ghosts, zombies, time travel, parallel mm -hmm. dimensions, like whatever paranormal thing you're looking for, this show had it and it's really fun. Yeah, absolute favorite. There's like 265 episodes or some crazy thing. So yeah, you can boom wow. till your heart's content. Because back then the seasons were a lot longer. Yeah, they were really long. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. Really fun stuff. And then one last one uh, for Redbox. And this is another one that was like my jam in college, but uh, it's sort of forgotten. I brought it up to a couple of people at work and and they had, had never heard of it. The Kids in the Hall. Did oh my God. Yeah. They just did like a reunion thing too. They did. They relaunched this. They just relaunched the series like three or four years ago. The but... first episode I tried to watch, I was like, oh, wow. Wow. They just went right for it. I was like, oh, yeah. I did not mean to see that. <laughs> so they broke all the boxes oh, of what geez. people thought sketch comedy. And it was yeah. weird because like some of them would be like that. And then some of them would be like these surreal, almost like art pieces. Mm -hmm. The whole thing with the, the sausage maker. I don't know if you remember the, <laughs> I remember the German sausage. sausage maker. That is the weirdest 20 minutes of uh, television ever created. Weren't they also the, the I crush your head. I crush your crush head. You're, you're a yeah, flathead. Yeah. You're a flathead. It was a whole thing about that. And you're like, literally just some dude. And I was yeah. like, yeah. Okay. And the chicken works. lady. Do you remember the yeah, chicken lady? Yeah, the chicken lady. Oh my That's god. It. And then the weird boss character. Yes. Uh, Dave Foley. So yeah. it's Dave Foley from News Radio, Mark McKinney uh, from Superstore, Kevin McDonald, Bruce McCullough, and Scott Thompson. Those are the five uh, oh, guys so who good. played like ninety eight percent of the characters on that show. And oh. Yeah, it was the fun. it was the Canadian version of uh, like Monty Python kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of. Yeah, but maybe but even more it's inappropriate. Completely, oh God. Yeah. So inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> so swinging back to the other end of the the appropriateness spectrum, yes. <laughs> have some chicken soup for the soul, and you can watch that um on the chicken soup for the old soul app which we launched on roku since the last time we talked That's right. mm -hmm. but you can also watch it on uh vizio samsung on your fire tv um or you can go to chicken soup um and we have a ton of great uh classic tv on there one of my favorites which i forgot how much i loved it until i had to go look this up and uh start doing research on it and i was like it's so good uh, the Partridge Family. Oh, yeah, such a great show. I love that. Yeah. So um, we have the Partridge Family, and I had forgotten how many. I mean, obviously, this David Cassidy, huge, you know, that like exploded his career, and he right. became like uh, a household name. Susan Day, Danny Bonaducci, uh, Dave Madden, who played Reuben Kincaid, and then the lovely Shirley Jones. Oh, Shirley Jones. Um, yeah, it was so great. But their guest stars were crazy. They had Jodie Foster, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Hamill, Dick Clark, Rob Reiner, and Farrah Fawcett, for crying out loud. Yeah. I forgot about some of them. It's been a long time. Nick at Night it was like my, my, my jam. And they always- You, you like should that. go back and rewatch it because Dana, Danny Bonaducci, uh, you can say what you want to about him. Oh, he no, is he's... spectacular he on really that show. Is. Like, yeah, yeah. he was the smartest- 12 year old kid or however he was oh, probably yeah. he was probably 30 and they just had him play 12 but like he was so his comic timing on that show oh, was, so was perfect yeah. yeah 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 super good so, um well we only have two minutes left so, okay fair enough you know, i'll make a list of anything we missed and we'll put okay. it in the description because there's Beautiful. a lot Beautiful. <laughs> The time just flies when I'm talking I to you. I know. I'm like, I need to, you know, I am going to upgrade because I mean, that would make us talk longer, but I mean, not that this I'm high, true. but I know you've got, you got places to go, people to see, <laughs> talk to, whatever. But, um, you know, I do like to actually say goodbye to you as well. You bet. Well, you know, thank so. you so much for having me. 
And uh, I look forward to coming back and we will be talking uh, all the June titles. We've got um, a lot. I, I cannot wait. Stuff coming. Yeah, so I'll put the, you know, the links in the descriptions, list in the descriptions, everybody tune in and check everything out. There's a lot to watch, but I promise you won't be disappointed. Thanks You're again. The best. You guys have a great day. Thank you so all right. much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.